Hello, we are on day 21 of my 30 day setter journey where just as a reminder, I am sourcing, interviewing and getting offered a high ticket remote sales rep job. And I'm at the point in my journey where companies are actually offering me interviews and I'm like, shit, I didn't think I'd get this far. Like, what do I say? So inside this video, we're gonna go through some common questions that you will get asked inside of your interviews and what to say as a credible response so that they're taking you seriously as a candidate and they're gonna move you forward to the next step and eventually hire you. And then if you stick around to the end, I'm actually gonna give you questions that you should ask them when on the interview. You're gonna push them back up against a corner and be like, whoa, no other candidate has asked me this question before. Clearly this guy means business. Clearly I should hire him right the f uh. now. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, most common question that you're gonna get in this process is what is your biggest weakness? Okay, what the employer is looking for here is honesty. They wanna be able to see that this is a candidate that can admit when they've done wrong, take ownership for that failure, and they've taken the steps necessary to just move forward and become a more valuable person. So I have a little bit of a framework for how you can answer this question. So first things first, you wanna choose a genuine weakness that you might struggle with and you cannot choose perfectionism. Guys, it's just a cop-out. It's a cop-out answer. First up, you wanna fill in the blanks here with whatever your biggest weakness actually is. So my biggest weakness is blank. The biggest struggle of blank for me is blank. And the way I found that I can work around that is to X, Y, and Z solution. Let's go through an actual answer that I've written inside an application to a business. <clears throat> my biggest weakness, to be totally frank and candid, has been putting my attention toward the small details. So in the past, I've noticed myself forgetting to upload call recordings into my pipeline or write my end of day reports. The way I found I can work around that is intentionally setting times once a project is done to reread, double check before I do an end of day approval or sign off for the day. And with that being said, even though I've found ways to work through this weakness, my innate ability to focus on the big picture is actually a superpower that will help grow your business because in sales calls, I'm zoomed out to the big situation of their life and I'm not so much in the tiny details. On top of that, if I were to enter a company like yours, I'd naturally be looking big picture. How can I take what you're doing now in sales and grow this exponentially over the next year? What are the little things that will make an impact? So although on a micro scale, my weakness has been a wall to climb over, on a macro scale, I think I can be super valuable to your company. <gasps> Another common question that you get asked in this process is just the reverse of the weakness is your strength. You know, what do you say for your strength? And really, you wanna choose one of the following closer traits on the screen right now and go into that as a strength. So you wanna be able to choose something like listening, being emotionally intelligent, asking good questions, being curious, thinking big picture, right? These sorts of traits in a closer, companies wanna hire for because that is what's ultimately gonna have you succeed in this role. So my biggest strength is really just my innate ability to be curious. I was the type of kid who always grew up asking why, 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 and I always sought to understand why things work the way they did. And so when I have a sales call with a person and they have a problem that they're really struggling with, I really try to dig in deep to understand why this is happening. And once I understand why, and I help them understand why, I can really make an easy transformation for them to onboard them onto new products and services that are gonna help them excel in their life. Another common question you get is what is your long-term vision for the company? So there's two ways you can go about answering this. Now, it should be obvious that your long-term vision should be you know, working with this company and making money with the company and growing alongside the company. That's what these guys want. However, if you really have a long-term vision where you see this business being able to help you grow onto your next thing, let's say that you know, you're joining some kind of real estate investing company and 10 years from now you wanna own a lot of real estate properties, well, you can let them know, like, I see myself working at this company for at least 10 years, learning everything, soaking it up, helping you guys make more money, and eventually down the road, I'd like to start my own um, real estate property acquisition business uh, and grow that um, long term. Right? And that's gonna let them know like, okay, like your goals for your future align with our goals for the company. And being here for you know five, 10 years is really gonna allow us to quote unquote, you know, get the most juice out of the squeeze for you as a, uh, 
employee. Now let's get into the question that everyone dreads being asked is what kind of experience do you have? Okay. And people tend to think like you can't get jobs unless you have like some kind of degree or certification. I wonder why that is college, but in a sales world, there is no official college or degree platform that you can get certified and then start working in sales positions. So the only thing that these business owners can go off of is your word to them and your actual like on the call ability to talk to them and show off, you know, your pizzazz and your style and like, like who you are kind of deal. And so with all that being said, like you can get this position having zero experience. It's all about how you present yourself. I mean, look at Frank Abagnale. He got a job as a freaking surgeon and a lawyer when he had absolutely no qualifications. It's just about how you present yourself. So how can you present yourself in this case? Well, before I give you kind of an answer, I'll let you know, like I have gotten various jobs in my life that I was completely unqualified for. And I didn't end up staying there long, maybe three or four months, but they gave me the job and the opportunity because I had so much conviction letting them know that I was going to uh, make them a lot of money and I was going to work hard for their cause. So in this case, I would say something like, yep, thank you for the question. I have invested extensive hours and money into sales training programs. I have invested at least 50 hours into mock training calls with other students who are learning sales. I have personally trained under Ethan E watching all of his YouTube videos. And over the past three years, I've worked as a waiter where I've specialized in customer service and working with clients. So I really understand, you know, what it's like to talk with people and build up natural conversations and rapport. And then you want to finish off with some kind of promise or guarantee of like the work and effort you'll put in. So I'd finish off with saying something like, although I don't have any direct hands-on experience in the field as of yet, I'm going to do everything in my power to see success in the first 30 to 90 days in order to uh, be a high performer on your team, right? That's going to let them know like, wow, like this guy's freaking serious. Let's give him a shot. Let's give him a try. Let's see what happens. Now, how do you answer? What kind of experience do you have if you have sales experience in different types of industries selling different types of things. Well, in this case, you want to talk about like your numbers. You want to talk about what revenue you've produced. You want to talk about how many clients you've managed or had over the years. What records have you broken? Uh, were you the top salesperson? Give kind of guesstimates if you don't have the exact numbers, right? And so um, you want to, con you can condense that all very quickly. I mean, these guys aren't looking for like three, four, five minute answers. I mean, 30 seconds to 60 seconds tops. Just letting them know like, yeah, I was the top salesman selling farm equipment with over $3.2 million in sales. When I joined that company, they were only doing 3 million a year in revenue and I helped grow them up to 6 million in revenue. I then graduated up from that company selling digital marketing services and I managed and sold around 10 to 15 new clients every month. And I repeated that month after month for 24 months. And now I'm looking to transition my career into something that is more flexible and aligned with my long-term goals of whatever they're selling, of fitness and health and management of the heart, soul, and body. And they're gonna be like, wow, right, boom. Another common question that you're gonna get asked is why do you wanna be a closer or why do you wanna be an appointment setter? And so there's two parts to answering this that you wanna include. You wanna include the selfish reasons you wanna do this as well as the unselfish reasons. So the unselfish reasons, you'd start off your response with this and you'd say, I want to be a closer because I've always had a fascination with people's limiting mindsets and their beliefs. And I find that when I'm able to step in a role where I can understand what's holding them back and then challenge those beliefs to help them improve their life significantly, to me, that is the most fulfilling job. Perfect, right? And then you add on to that your selfish reasons. You, you tack that onto the end. You'd, so you'd say something like, in addition to that, I'd really like to be able to make enough money to support myself and my partner so that my partner doesn't have to work. And I see this as being an opportunity that I'll be able to do that if I'm able to hit my on track earnings that you've posted in your ad. So there you go. Now they have your motivations for why you're doing what you're doing and you've aligned your kind of goals and reasons for doing this with their on track earnings of like what you can possibly get paid in this position. So that just kind of seems like a win win at the business owners like, wow, he just told me his story and I want to be a part of his story. I want to help him achieve this thing for his partner. That's going to make me feel good. And guys, people want other people to feel good in general, like human beings, I believe are good people. So they want to help you. So if you can bring them into your story, 
fantastic. Okay, now let's switch over to the questions that you should be asking the business owner. And so the questions only fall into three different buckets. Bucket one is the magnitude of the opportunity. What are the numbers? What are the facts? What is the revenue? What's actually going on behind the scenes here? Bucket number two is culture. What kind of team is this? Do I want to be in this environment? And then bucket number three is results. Like what kind of results are they actually getting for their clients? Are they just scamming people in like a phone cell company halfway across the world? Or are they actually changing people's lives? I'm going to give you just a few questions you can ask the business owner that'll make you stand out. But if you're looking for a full comprehensive detailed list of every kind of question that you can ask in an interview, download one of the first links in the bio below will be an extensive ebook that you can get for free. So check that out. So question number one, what is your top sales rep producing? Okay. What has he been producing for the last three months? Okay. That's going to give you an idea of the revenue he's producing, the cash collection he's producing, the commission he's producing. And you can know like if he's top dog, I'm probably not going to be making what he's making for a little bit. And so if he's not making a good amount of money, then you can skip over the offer. Question number two is how long have you guys, you know, existed? How long has this offer been live? Generally, if an offer has been live for less than a year, it's too new for them to have their systems in place and things running smoothly. So I'd skip out on that offer. Uh, what's been your revenue over the last three months? Again, that's going to tell you the magnitude of the opportunity. If something's below $100,000 a month, you gotta want to skip that opportunity. Another great question is how do you generate leads? Okay, am I dialing numbers off like the cold call phone book or you guys have some kind of like famous Instagram page where people are sending in their information all the time? Like, how are you actually collecting these leads? And another follow up question to that is like, what's the lead flow? What's the numbers here? How many leads am I dealing with on a monthly basis if you're a setter? How many appointments am I dealing with on a monthly basis if you're a closer? Let's go on to bucket number two, which is company culture. Great question for this is like, well, why do you like working here? What's your favorite part about working here? What is this team like? What's the kind of inside joke that your guys' team has that like you have to kind of be in the know to, to understand and know? What you're looking for here is just like a fit in a match if you're gonna fit inside this company. Cause yeah, you can make really great money and you can probably sacrifice you know your happiness for a year because you hate the team members, but eventually that you're gonna burn out and fade. So, so I just try to look for a, a company culture that's like fun and enthusiastic, but also like high performers who really are achievers in all aspects of their life, not just in sales, but in their fitness and in their relationships. And of course, that's going to motivate me and make me feel great. And then final bucket is just client results. So a great question you can ask here is what percentage of your clients are succeeding? And I set a personal note here, which is if it's below 65%, I won't touch it. If it's above 65%, then great. We've got the green light. That's only because like something like 47% of college grads like drop out and don't end up getting their bachelor degrees, but they still end up paying the tuition. So I'm like, okay, if the offer is more successful than college, then I'll feel good about selling this. Another great question you can ask is what's been your favorite client success story? And they should tell you a story about a client who they've taken from this problem to this dream scenario. And if you feel inspired by that, then Great, that's a green flag you wanna move ahead. If you want three bonus questions that you can ask during the interview that'll get a response like this. Use that goal, you know, next month. But I've never been asked that question. That's a that's a really good question, for sure. Um, well, then download the full interview prep guide down below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you later.